my name is Marina Vaskina, and we will be talking about interceptors in this webinar. I am the maintenance lead for this release of the interceptor specification. And while it is a big revamp of the spec itself, it stayed under the JCP rule under its previous GSR 3.18. This is a maintenance update to the Interceptors 1.1. Now the Interceptor spec contains all common rules for all Java e Interceptor types. We have all definitions in, and rules in one place, and this pack is intended to be used by both developers and the container providers. What did we do in this release? We interceptor bindings are now part of the interceptor spec. It was only mentioned that they exist in 1.1. We improved document flow and added more examples. We introduced a new lifecycle interceptor type around construct. We defined standard priority ranges, and we simplified rules for interceptor method signatures. Interceptor bindings are now part of the interceptor spec. So we revamped the spec, reorganizing it and making it a single place where you can go and read about interceptors. Interceptor binding chapter has been moved from the CDI spec into the interceptor spec. The spec was separated into clearly defined chapters instead of a single chapter. Now it has five, with common rules being common rules and rules specific to binding type being clearly defined as specific roles. We moved out the EGB JAR XML deployment descriptor elements back to the EGB spec where it belongs because it is only the EGB spec that allows use of this particular deployment descriptor to define and bind interceptors to the component. And we did the same with the BINS XML Though it is mentioned in the spec, everything about BINS XML, how you can use it, stayed in the CDI spec. It is a single document for everything interceptors. You don't need now to search two or three documents for the answers. We tried as much as we could to improve the situation, and we added a lot of examples. This is a new interceptor a life cycle type that is intended to use by the bin validation components to implement bin validation for the inject constructors. But you can use those around construct interceptors if you feel necessary for your applications as well. So because it is around constructing the target instance, the interceptor itself can be defined only on the interceptor class. Even if you specify it on the target instance, it will be ignored because it cannot be invoked. Now, the life cycle of interceptor and target instance change slightly when a round construct is invoked. Without a round construct, both instances are created, injection is completed on both instances, and then post construct is invoked or a round invoke is invoked, whatever interceptor is defined. With a round construct, the story is a little bit different. At first, the interceptor instances are created and injection is completed into the interceptor instances. One or more of those interceptor instances inject the target instance, that injection won't be done. After interceptor instances are created, they uh, are invoked and the last invocation context proceed call in the chain results in the instance creation and uh, construction injection. After the proceed call, the interceptor can access the instance and use it as before via invocation context get target method. After a round construct completes, the injection is completed on the target instance. And at that moment, target instance is ready for business. If post construct is defined for the target instance, post construct will be also invoked after all previous steps are done. We also introduced target type constructor for the interceptors with interceptor bindings. Our constructor defines around construct method called validate constructor that will be called when an instance is around the instance creation. Some bin uh, has inject constructor and the validate constructor uh, will be called when the instance is created.
Priority annotation has been added to the common annotation specification in the Java E platform, and it is used by the interceptors specification to order interceptors bound um, using interceptor bound binding. It does not apply to interceptor bound using interceptors annotation. When priority is specified for interceptor binding interceptors, it does two things. It orders those interceptors and it enables interceptors. You don't need to enable them anymore using Bean's XML deployment descriptor. The rule is very simple. Interceptors with smaller priorities are called first, with bigger priorities are called after that. And if you have one, uh, more than one interceptor with the same priority, their order is undefined. We predefined priority ranges to be useful for the developers and component providers. The ranges are as follows. Platform providers will mostly use the range starting with platform before, which is called early platform interceptors. Early platform range is platform before up to library before. Then there is a library, early library range from library before to application. From application to applic library after is the range that is intended for use in the application interceptors. Library after to platform after will be the late library interceptors, those interceptors that needs to be executed later in the chain of interceptors. And platform after until maximum integer available are the late platform interceptors. So these rules are prescription rules. There are no requirements to use them explicitly, but they, we feel they're very useful to order interceptors in a good way. These are two examples of using priority, one with um, using those predefined values and uh, another one using just the value itself. So the first one uh, is a library interceptor that says uh, the priority is library before plus 10. And the second interceptor just says uh, uh, the priority for this interceptor is 2100, independent of what other interceptors are doing. We simplified rules for interceptor method signature. In interceptors 1.1, 1, 1, around invoke and around timeout interceptors methods are very simple. They return an object and they, th uh, they can throw an exception. For around invoke, it is easy to explain because around, uh, the business method can throw checked exceptions. So the, like, the interceptor is allowed to throw the same exception as the business method, uh, and you can have that throw, generic throws exception in the method signature. So you do something, you return context, invocation context proceed, and you are done. For lifecycle callback interceptor, it, is, it was not allowed to declare throws exception because lifecycle callbacks are not allowed to throw checked exceptions. It does not seem that complicated in the first um, glance, but if you start coding, you will realize that invocation context proceed actually declares to throw an exception. To avoid throwing an exception from the method, you would always need to have a try, catch that exception, wrap it into a runtime exception, and rethrow it because you don't know what this exception might be. So absolutely unnecessary boilerplate code, and also you can't use the same method for all interception types. We simplified the rules for interceptor method signatures, saying that all interceptor methods can have exactly the same signature with object as returning type and throws exception in its throws clause, not because we allow now lifecycle callbacks to start throwing exceptions, but just to avoid that boilerplate code. And as you can see, this is a single monitor method that interposes on around invoke and post construct and pre-destroy. And it's very simple. It does something and then it returns context proceed. For lifecycle, uh, you need to remember that the return value is null and it is ignored, but to simplify developer's life, we felt that uh, it is very useful. It is a maintenance update to the interceptors 1.1 with a major revamp of the pack document itself. 
not major changes to what interceptors are, but major improvements to the the specification document with all definitions and rules in one place with several new features added and useful for developers and container providers. You can try it yourself. Let us know if it is indeed a better document and those new features are useful for you. Download the SDK, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, read Aquarium blog and download the Glassfish from glassfish.org. Let us know file bugs both in implementation and in the specification if you find. We will try to improve it in the next release. Thank you.